Weber carbs are uh, well there's all kinds of different sizes this is the standard one on the Fiat which I have a few of I've tried larger carbs right now and I just you know I don't have the right manifolds and the right um, I don't know all the fitting and things to do it this just you know goes on fairly easily with the stock manifold that you know I've got hogged out and everything there's a few other modifications you can do to the intake and the head but um, this this particular carb has got um, the throttle shafts have been reduced in size and the screws have been um, machined down so I think you can see that compared to this is the the standard one where you can see those screws are still there and you can see how obstructive they are well I mean it's a carburetor but yeah there's there's a bunch of stuffers obstructing the path of the airflow there so during this rebuild I had a or just putting it together it's been rebuilt several times I had a strip thread here I put in a new uh, helicoil um, and put that back in with some lock Loctite I removed all the um, choke apparatus all the fittings and pivot points for the choke is here here here's another one and there was an arm sticking off here and another arm here that would open up the throttle plate slightly when when you pulled the choke that something would open it up like that right here a little arm actually it's right here it's this arm here this arm I removed because it's only here for the choke. So if you pulled the choke, it would open the throttle just a little bit to give you a little higher idle. So this was removed, no problem. And there's a little spring washer in there that I took out. There's a little a spacer in there that this thing rides on, so it's like no issue taking it out instead of just having it flopping around there because when you take the choke out it just flops around this also flops around not because of the choke but there's some um, emissions control device here that would had an arm that would move it up and down like that so I took this off too by unscrewing that and removing it this thing comes off pretty easily it's not it can't be tightened on there really good that's why they got that little lock plate on it so I don't push down the lock plate all the way I don't want to make another one and break that but I just put it down just enough to get that bolt off the nut, uh, nut I mean so things that I've done that, I, I, that are different than other times where I've taken off the emissions is I plugged it from the bottom here I took a took this little it's a little brass brass plug that uh, is inserted it's right here this little plug it's put right the factory puts it right there it's got a little metering hole on it so I uh, once you just start drilling it out it start it comes out on its own and then underneath there you got this hole probably about a sixteenth of an inch so I took some material similar to this actually it looked even shiny like this I don't know it was some axle off of something um, I don't, or uh, hard drive part or something and uh, I just uh, cut a section probably about this long and I and I punch I used a punch and I, and I shoved it in there and it's a pretty tight fit so I like that better this is the first time I've done that instead of putting a screw in here which you know I've usually done right there you know putting in a you know, or uh, something there to plug up that hole. You know, I've done this too. You know, put in a, some threaded fitting there, but it's a really shallow hole, so you got to have the right 
you got to have a bottoming tap to get it all the the, the, the the threads all the way to the bottom and if you don't you hardly have any threads and you could just epoxy it shut I mean there's all kinds of ways to to do it I just like to do it and prove it every time I do it and see if I can find a better way um, ideally yeah it would be kind of neat to just you know put this in a mill and machine this down and machine that down and take it off machine this off machine that I mean it'd be all oh, it, it would look a lot better instead of having all this stuff hanging off of the carb but for now everything's removed that what that I don't need um, I also plugged it here the way I usually do it because I can't figure out a better way to do it is I do a little screw there I make them I make them out of uh, these things here see that screw Let's see if I can get a good focus on that um, this is a uh, just a piece of this cut off right so this is like a uh, I think it's a 1032 thread socket head Allen it's a hardened bolt that I've used used uh, for some other projects you know I've got you know an assortment of nuts and bolts and this just seems to be a pretty a pretty good size to use in there and I and I have a tap available for this so you could use metric or whatever you want and you can even uh, you know get several pieces off of one like that see you know you can like this one was a longer one I don't know but they're all done up like this with this Dremel wheel and uh, you just cut a little slit in it and it just these Dremel wheels work really well for that um, they're real thin and then you can use the side of them to to trim up the, the screw where you know if you have the, you know the best part of the screw is this bottom right it's like already beveled and ready to pop in so once you start wanting to use an area <laughs> wanting to screw in something that you've cut it usually needs to be burnished down a little bit with this side so it's you know the best part is the using the end but hey I usually get not to economize that much but I can get two or three out of one screw and just put that in a vise once and cut three of them and that way I can use them for you know other carbs too um, the other thing I found is some of my inlet uh, that are float needles. The seats have these uh, advanced uh, uh, drain or, or uh, flow holes, which are kind of neat. So as soon as the as soon as the needle opens, then uh, fuel can pop out of here, and not only out of here. So I kind of like those. I might even start adding holes to my uh, seats. I don't know what difference it would make really but uh, compared to most kits come this way with no holes. Another thing I did in this one is I took uh, this battery powered Dremel works better but you can see this is what's in here is this little q-tip but it's a stick one. You can get these at probably dollar store electronics you know they're just a heavier duty q-tip so I just break it off here put it in a battery powered Dremel or just something not as powerful as a you know wall work Dremel or you know something really powerful and what I do is I polish I polish the uh, the seat of the thing with some uh, I'm, gonna, I'm using this right now but there's all kinds of metal polishes you can use and what that does is polishes the seat so you get really good um, uh, seal and uh, action on the uh, needle valve. 
uh, might not be noticeable. Here's a needle valve that's rubber, so I don't I don't know what that would do, but this is the best way to do it is to make sure you got a really nice surface down there. And the only way to do it is with a little Q-tip and put a little bit of uh, you know fine metal polish on it, and that way you get it really polished. This unit looks pretty polished overall. It must be. I don't know if I polished it earlier or what, but anyways, I did the inside. Uh, most of these needles are brass tipped. I have not hardly found any that are rubber like that one I showed you. Here's a gasket. I haven't installed it yet, but those go behind here. Uh, you can add by adding more gaskets on this thing actually it's probably not the right size even there's the more gasket you add to this thing the more the larger float chamber you get so the right the, the higher you get this thing the more fuel can you can get in here and the more you can pump out so whenever you know you want to accelerate and you got a you know you got some other performance uh, modifications on your engine and you want to get this squirter to squirt out more fuel you, there's also uh, some that are double that squirt out in both but I, I don't know if that was on an 850 or another car but I, I have one of those there's also different size jets but if you just wanted it to squirt more you know fuel I haven't really measured it or done it myself but that might be a way to space this out and that way you hold more fuel in there uh, Let's see any other modifications, changes. I guess that's that's about it. The, the cover is here, and uh, I don't know if I. Oh, I just finished up the. I finished up plugging the choke because I took the choke shaft out, and the choke the whole choke mechanism on the whole carburetor is gone. But that required plugging these holes up. Well. Not really required, but if you wanted to have all your airflow go directly down in here instead of causing turbulence through here and here, uh, I always do this, you know, not only on Weber's but other types of carburetors whenever I remove the choke. So this is a little stepped one. Aluminum piece that's about five to ten thousandths bigger. If I was to do it again, I would probably make it longer and then blend this in with like one of these rollers and blend it in. Actually this is what I use to blend in. You can see some of this thing here that I did to blend in you know some of the factory uh, detail that they put in there just to have that choke mechanism. If you can see this one it's not. See that this whole area here I blended that because it was pretty sharp edged and uh, you know, I know this doesn't make that much difference, but you know, it, while it, while you got it out, you might as well just do the best job you can. Um, so I blend this in, and then I blended this in as much as I could using, you know, one of these, and you know, several other ones. Maybe you know, one of these on the on the large bell side to to, to blend that on the top there a little bit, and. Uh, I came up with something like this that's as good as I can get it for now. I mean, I'm, I wish that was bigger so it would have flowed, you know, I could have just did it with the, the little sanding drum here and just made it real nice like, like this here, which turned out pretty nice. This side, you can hardly tell that there's a plug in here, see? So it should have looked that way here too. But I'm not perfect. And it's not too bad for, you know. And removing the choke, you know, normally what I what I do to start the car is, you know, I've got an electric fuel pump. So this bowl fills up like right away. So what I do is I pump the pedal. I'm going to get a lot of squirts out of here. Uh, this is the jet for you know under acceleration but what I do is I use it for uh, getting a little gas in the in the engine so I'll pump it a few times 
and then uh, hold the pedal down halfway and then um, or all the way until it starts and then just keep uh, revving it and uh, you know pressing the pedal and ejecting more gas here until it warms up after about 15-20 seconds not completely warm but then you can go to a high idle and you don't have to have a choke if it's not below zero or you know you don't have to drive off right away but you know the rest of the car is so modified and got its shortcomings that not having a choke isn't is, is really kind of minor in my case so uh, I guess that's about it. The, the progressive stuff here, uh, I removed, uh, this one is not set up to, it's still a progressive uh, carburetor where it it goes from, you know, the primary opens first, then the secondary opens. And you'll notice that, you know, you can See, if I did this again, you know, back when I did it this way, I didn't have a welder, so I just did drilling and fabrication. But if I did it again, I would probably do this. This is what I would do. If somebody, you know, this is probably a popular thing to do. Hopefully somebody does it and says, wow, you know, it really performs a lot better. I, I haven't tested it enough to tell you. But I would add material to this and just weld a chunk of metal you know as much as you want your progression all the way up to here and just weld it here and uh, that way you don't need to drill or anything you just add a piece of metal right here don't weld it to this but uh, just add instead of it ending there have it end over here and that way you'll have it you'll have that immediate progression only thing is is the geometry of this thing is kind of strange I don't get it, but I mean, you'll, this opens up like this really slow. Then, as soon as you hit the second, it opens like really, you know, in very little movement, it opens up really fast. So, I would think that, you know, if your engine is ready to go, then I guess you're going to get a second barrel really quick on this thing, you know, with the progressive, non progressive setup, if you wanted to modify it that way. Um, I guess that's that's about all I'm gonna say on the carb for now. I might I might do have something else, but generally that covers the modifications you need to make a you know get rid of all the smog stuff and then uh, get rid of the choke stuff. I'd imagine all of all the people get rid of the choke. It's not that big of an advantage. Uh, but other than that, I th I think we covered about 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 everything you could probably do. To one of these carbs other than you know you can clean it this is cleaned by a wire wheel I don't have a bead blaster I don't even know if that's a good idea in a carb but you know to have something like sediment in there like that so this is just on a really fine wire wire wheel a large one like an 8 or 10 inch wire wheel and just really holding it carefully and you can get you know a fairly good job on it like that you know ideally it'd be good to bead blast it and all that stuff but um, all the metal's been cleaned up and polished here, so everything should operate you know, really smooth. This thing you'll notice is still bent. I did this years ago. Uh, it usually is like this. And what I was trying to do is to figure out, well, how do I get it to be non-progressive? So I started bending this and bending it and bending it and bending it, and it just wouldn't work all the way until I figured out you know how to add that but I bent it back so you can see now it's still a little bent so this is a little bit modified it, so it's gonna start progressing to the second going in a secondary barrel sooner than a, a st stock carburetor so it's I'm gonna keep it like this for now and, and see how it runs for me so that's it for now